We're now well into the first week of May. It's a beautiful day, so I thought I would shoot out here for the, the monthly update video in which I'm going to talk about what went on during April, which is a very busy month as usual, and what we've got coming up in May, which is also pretty packed. Uh, before I do that, a few quick highlights, three main things. Um, one is that I now have a new position with the GCAS, the Global Center for Advanced Studies, and I'll talk about that when I get to the May section. Um, the Half Hour Hegel videos are, are doing quite well. We've actually stepped up production and we're going to try to get out six per month because the Patreon campaign has reached an important milestone. And another important thing, I've got a hangout on air tonight with Tom Ritchie, another YouTube um, content producer who, who's a high school history professor and, and a prep master for AP exams. We're going to be talking about European philosophy. So that's coming up tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So let's talk about the month of April. April was, like I said, a very busy month. I only gave two public speeches during that time, or, or workshops, you, you might actually call them, both of which were here in Kingston, so I didn't have to travel, which is quite nice. Um, one was in the library series Understanding Anger. This time I actually got to talk about the person who I've done the most research on with respect to that. That's Aristotle. Uh, I'm currently writing a book about Aristotle's theory of anger. I've been doing that for quite some time and getting drawn off into a lot of side projects. So um, we did that. The video for that's been up for, for quite a while. I also did a talk about humility and whether it's a vice or virtue. And we looked at six different um, philosophers and theologians, two from the ancient times, including Aristotle and Epictetus, two from the Middle Ages, uh, John Cassian, really late antiquity John Cassian, but we'll call him his Middle Ages, and then, then St. Anselm, and two from the modern age, uh, David Hume and Mary Wollstonecraft. So I did that at the uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, community, the Catskills, and it was great conversation that we had. It went on about twice as long as I expected it to, so that was a lot of fun. Um, Videos. Uh, my video production this month has been largely confined to Half Hour Hegel videos. Uh, I released four of those this month. Um, some critical thinking videos. I'm glad to be getting back into those. Uh, some of the fallacy videos, and I've also shot some other footage that I'll be releasing down the line. And uh, continuing with releasing the worldviews and values videos. Uh, this month I concentrated on... Who was it? Rousseau, and um, we'd already done Wollstonecraft, um, we'd already done King, yeah, mainly Rousseau, I think, um, but, we, you know, we sort of got caught up on that. April was a very busy month as far as courses went. I was almost working, uh, uh, you know, what many of my colleagues would have as a full-time load, you know, three classes in a given term. Uh, for three different institutions, all of which are online, all of which I produce all the content for. So, a lot of work. Uh, my Aplerno class, the Existentialism class, finished up in April. Uh, my Marist Worldviews and Values class is getting close to the end, so April was, you know, the do-or-die time for many of them. And we also started the Global Center for Advanced Studies Philosophical Foundations class with a whole, you know, cohort of students uh, and I've been staying like one step ahead of them in developing content, sort of like almost laying bridge as they're going along. So that's been a lot of work. Um, now I mentioned that I have a new position with the Global Center for Advanced Studies, and so I should talk about that a little bit. Um, I'll talk about what happened during April, and then I'll talk more about the, the stuff ahead in, in the May section. So the Global Center for Advanced Studies is a entirely online, very innovative, very progressive organization that's devoted to uh, combating some of the, the, the excesses and abuses that have occurred in education because of what we call neoliberalism. Um, you know, sort of like let the market drive things and the race to the bottom that so many universities seem to be involved in. And the GCAS, their aim is ultimately, you know, quite comprehensive. They want to be able to offer 
a free or nearly free education based on sort of an economy of scale and getting people to, to commit resources to it. They're not anywhere near that, that point yet, but they have a lot of really brilliant researchers and uh, scholars, and they brought me in to, to help with administration because I have a background in educational leadership and assessment of student learning and curriculum design, and I am also a you know, working philosopher as well. So um, at first they put me into the position of the director, the, the acting director of the Institute of Critical Philosophy, but now there's been a decision made to actually uh, create a new institute that I am now the head of. I'm the director of the Institute of Humanities and Social Sciences. Uh, what else? I, I carried out some writing projects. I got some work done on, on writing on Anselm, tidying up some papers that I, I long ago wrote and, and which need to go out. Um, I started some work on Gabriel Marcel, um, somebody who I um, have, have translated, but who I haven't written articles on previously. But the Gabriel Marcel Society asked me if I would write a paper. I promised to do it some months back. And I'm now actually getting to the outlining stage, so that that's good. Um, I also um, did some some writing projects on the Stoics as well, uh, in part because I'm preparing for my anger discussion coming up this month. And I got to do a bit of blogging, not so much as I would have liked. Some of the blogs are still laying a bit fallow, but I did write quite a bit in the Half Hour Hegel blog, at least. So I should also talk about the the Half Hour Hegel project. So, um, you know, I started the Patreon campaign for Half Hour Hegel back in late February. And, um, you know, it, it took a little while to get some traction, but it's now getting quite a few people who, who want to be involved with it, in part because they're starting to see the, the rewards of it coming out. I, I offer a free uh, question and answer period by, by Google Hangout once per month to all of the patrons. Um, they, they get some other, you know, goodies as well, depending on what scale they, they get into it at. And, um, you know, some of the patrons have actually started taking advantage of the tutorial sessions that I, I provide as one of the perks for, for a certain level. Um, so I've been doing a lot of Hegel discussion, which is great. I've um, been shooting videos, uh, the, the editing takes quite a while, so there's a lot of work on the back end for me before I release them, and I've been concentrating on that this month. If you're interested in the Half Hour Hegel Project, um, you know, there's a link down in the description, and, uh, you know, whether you're interested in Hegel or not, this is a highly innovative digital resource, never been done before, really, that, that I'm, I'm working out and which I'm going to be involved in for at least the next three years. So if you want to contribute to support something like that, by all means, uh, I'd, I'd love to have you with it. Um, what else in April? Did a bit of consulting work. Um, I also did some some tutorial sessions. You can see the uh, the new information about the tutorial sessions on the reasonio.com website if you go there. Um, and I also engaged in some philosophical counseling. I, I've now put in enough time with that that I'm actually um, you know starting to, to to think about writing something. Um, not so much about my clients, but about um, uh, some of the theory in, involved in it and some of the resources that I'm using. So that's what happened in April. Let's talk now about the month of May. So I have two events coming up, and they're coming up very soon. Uh, one is tonight, if, if this gets uploaded in time. Uh, hopefully it will. I'm going to try to turn this around as quickly as possible. There is a Hangout on Air, free for anybody who wants to get involved, where you can ask me questions about modern European philosophy, including Hegel-related stuff. Um, it'll be um, Tom Ritchie's uh, Google Hangout. He, he does this uh, for some of his viewers. He's, he's a guy who's got a channel kind of similar to mine in that he does a lot of great videos about um, history of ideas. He does, he's focused on, on history primarily, whereas I'm in philosophy, but he's somebody who I, I very much enjoy partnering with um, because he and I have a lot of similar intuitions about the nature of ideas and grand historical developments. Um, and, and, you know, he, he's, a, he's a cool guy, so you should check him out. Um, I'm also doing a talk on anger this weekend, uh, May 9th, at the Kingston Public Library. It's in that Understanding Anger series. 
This one will actually be on the Stoics. And so I'm going to talk about the early Stoics and their views on emotion. And then we'll talk about Seneca's on anger. He wrote a whole book about anger. Uh, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius. Um, and as usual, I'll be posting a video of that talk later on. Um, I might be doing a hangout later this month with Tom Ritchie, specifically on Hegel and Hegel's role in history, but that hasn't been solidified yet, so, so we don't know if that's coming up. I should also mention that, you know, this is looking a little bit further ahead, but one of the things I'm getting ready for is during the month of June, the first half of the month, I'm actually going to be up in New Hampshire at the Institute for St. Anselm Studies doing a research fellowship helping the, the Institute out with some, some materials and also doing some research of my own, of course, and then that'll be capped by the Metaphysics Colloquium, which they have every year at the Institute for St. Anselm Studies. It's a great time for me because I get to reconnect with some old colleagues and I get to talk about ancient and medieval and modern philosophy with people who really know their, their stuff. You know, it's, it's one of those sort of things that's very important to have is peer interaction. Um, what else we got going on? I can actually say for, for once that I have no courses starting in May. Um, as a matter of fact, the Maris class will be wrapping up uh, shortly, you know, by, by next week. Um, the uh, Oplerno class is, of course, finished. The, the Global Center for Advanced Studies Philosophical Foundations class will end at the, the end of May. But um, just because I don't have classes coming out doesn't mean I'm not actually putting in a lot of work with classes because these also, like videos, take a lot of designing on the, the back end um, before you even come to the class. So I have to do a lot of work in generating resources and writing lessons and structuring things. So that's what I'm actually doing. I'm prepping for classes for later in the summer and for the fall that will be um, Marist, Aplerno, and Global Center for Advanced Studies. Um, videos. We're going to have a lot of cool video content coming out this month. I'm going to release six half-hour Hegel videos because now we've passed this milestone. At a certain level of support, I told my Patreon supporters that I would step up the production to six videos a month, and so I'm a man of my word. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, just hoping that we don't reach the eight videos per month too, too soon because that's a lot of work. Um, got some world views and values videos out. Uh, that are all focused on Marx. Those are the end of the, this sequence of worldviews and values, uh, but I will be shooting some more of those for an extended version of the class that'll be coming up uh, in, in the fall. I'm gonna be shooting a lot more critical thinking videos and releasing those, so expect to see some fallacy videos. Uh, I don't know that we'll get through all the fallacies through the month of May, but maybe by the end of June we will. Uh, I'm going to do, because people have been asking for it, when are you going to do another self-directed study video? Um, I'll, I'll release the next self-directed study video once I've created it, and it will be on Plato, and I think I'm going to focus it on um, Plato's discussions of, of love and friendship. So we're talking about the Lysis, the Symposium, and the Phaedrus. And so I'll, I'll release a, a video about how you can carry out self-study about that. And I am thinking about, you know, down the line writing an, an e-book that would accompany these and sort of curate the videos and give you diagrams and study questions and all that sort of sort of stuff, you know, that I could offer for, you know, like a, I don't know, minimal price of like two bucks or three bucks or something like that. But that, that requires me to find the time in order to, to make that happen. Um, with the Global Center for Advanced Studies, now in my new position, what I'm effectively been tasked with is building uh, an undergraduate program. The GCAS institutes that are currently in place, and there's, there's seven of them right now, you know, an Institute for Psychoanalysis, an Institute for Political Economy, an Institute for Critical Philosophy, those are graduate level institutes. And, you know, undergraduate teaching requires something quite different. Uh, in, in, a, in a lot of respects, it takes a lot more work to do undergraduate teaching, believe it or not, than it does to take, do graduate level teaching. Because undergraduate level teaching, you have to provide a lot more resources, a lot more structure. You need to make sure that, you know, um, we're thinking about student learning outcomes and how those tie in with assignments and how we eventually, you know, report this to somebody to show that real education is taking place. That's what's called assessment. And so I'm the person who's being tasked with, with 
attending to all those details, but I'm also the person who's going to be focusing on um, recruiting faculty, on scheduling classes, on developing the curriculum. Now what's really cool about this is GCAST doesn't want to do just the same thing as other online institutions. Uh, you know, why, why even bother doing that? We have the chance to sort of rethink what a, what a university education should be like for the 21st century and to get away from the, the, the stupid cliches that, that inhabit so much of the thinking about it, you know, they've got to be computer literate. Well, it's fine to be computer literate, but that's just, you know, like a baseline skill. What about actually being able to incorporate thoughts from the entire history of ideas that we have as a intellectual heritage and make sense out of our, our situations today with that. That takes a lot more thinking about how that could happen. Uh, and so I, I, that's, that's what my task is. Um, fortunately, it, it can be broken down into a lot of subtasks. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm focusing on right now is, is some of the groundwork, you could say. Um, but I'll give you updates about that as we, as we go on. I'm doing some more writing projects as well. I'm writing uh, uh, that article on, on Gabriel Marcel and the Christian philosophy debates. I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a paper on Aristotle and anger that was presented at the Ciceronian Society back in March that I, I need to expand and finish up, you know, finish all the rough edges in it, add in some footnotes, and then uh, submit to their journal. Um, I am working on a paper on Thomas Aquinas' views on anger and leadership for a conference coming up in June and I want to get that one you know solidly you know I want to get everything in place for that at least conference paper ready not necessarily publication ready but conference paper ready and I'm gonna be doing more blogging this month as a matter of fact tonight you can you can hopefully see uh, an entry in the heavy metal philosopher uh, I've got something I've been working on for the Virtue Ethics Digest, which I haven't contributed to for a while, Orexis Dianoetica, um, you know, there's some things I'm going to put in there as well, having to do with education and adjuncts. Um, Sadler's Existentialism Updates, got to do some updates, haven't done those for a while. And of course the Half Hour Hegel blog. Now there's also the uh, Reason I O blog itself. If you want to just follow, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing and important events that are coming up, I, I put little blurbs about them in there. But my main blogs are these, these other five blogs where I, I you know, get my, my thoughts out on, on the screen. Um, what else? I might be doing a little bit more consulting work. That that's that still uh, remains to be seen about this month. It has to do with certain agreements that uh, I'm not going to discuss in here. Um, I'm hoping that I'll get some, some more tutorial sessions booked. So if you're interested in tutorial sessions, um, you can see the information about that on the reasonio.com website. And I have um, quite a few sessions for philosophical counseling already booked but I do still have openings, so if you think that you are the kind of person who might benefit from philosophical counseling, um, you're, you're certainly welcome to, to you know, shoot me an email at greg at reason.io and, and I'll send you the documents about it. I haven't built out that part of the reason.io website yet, but, but I will be doing that this month as well so that all the information will be there and people can get a solid idea about what philosophical counseling is. I might even produce a video about it if I, if I find myself with any you know, extra spare time, which is probably not that likely. In any case, that's all the stuff that's coming up in May. So uh, I hope that you'll, you know, tune in to some of it or, you know, benefit from some of it. And uh, otherwise, have a good month.